All right, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and uh, speed run uh, explaining repos and why they're important. So a repurchase agreement, a repo, is a form of short-term borrowing for dealers and government securities, treasuries, U.S. treasuries specifically, um, uh, in our case. In the case of a repo, a dealer sells government securities to investors, usually on an overnight basis, and buys them back the following day at a slightly higher price. That small difference in price is the implicit overnight interest rate. Repos are typically used to raise short-term capital. They are also a common tool of central bank opera- open market operations. For the, mar- for the party selling the security and agreeing to repurchase it in the future, normally overnight, it is a repo. For the party on the other end of the transaction, buying the security and agreeing to sell it in the future, it is a reverse repo. So, why are reverse repos so important? Why is everyone freaking uh, out about them? Well, um, lately, uh, they have skyrocketed um, at, specifically, the reverse repo facility at the Fed has, has blown up. So, I guess we should backtrack. Repos <clears throat> are kind of like the way the entire system functions um, so b- banks can get their short-term collateral for deals like this, which I'll read this out real quick. So um, a hedge fund may want to take out a one-month loan from a primary dealer collateralized by some treasury securities. A primary dealer would make the one-month repo loan, then source the money by borrowing from one of its investor clients using those same securities as collateral. However, the dealer will likely borrow on an overnight basis instead of, a, of matching the maturity of the two loans. Since the interest rate for the overnight loans is lower than the rate of the one-month loans, the dealer will be able to earn the difference between, it, uh, between an interest it receives from the one-month loan to the hedge fund and what it pays its investor client for an overnight loan. So as you can see, uh, beyond just all the, the nitty-gritty of the debt market, um, the... The important thing to understand here is that the repo is a very important um, piece of uh, important security to have because all it is is government debt, right? So it's like a bond, but instead of being 30 years or a T note, which is 20 years or uh, in 21 to 20, one to 10 years, technically, um, you know, these different maturity dates for, for, for U.S. treasuries, um, Instead of that, it's not even it's not even a bill. It's not less than a year. It's it's a month or less. It's extremely short term, which con, uh, contrasts it to um, uh, to uh, to to T bills, which you know one which are one month to a year. So, um, why why is it specifically repos? Why is why aren't there other forms of collateral that they use? Well, they they did banks did use other forms of collateral. Um, like uh, mortgage-backed securities, but um, after 2008, they don't trust that because, well, Lehman Brothers, um, literally, <laughs> Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, specifically, I know more about Lehman Brothers. They um, they had made a bunch of basically. So imagine a bank has a bank has made a bunch of bad loans. It is forced to sell its assets so customers will get antsy and start pulling the money out of the bank. What that really means is they will convert those bank deposits into cash. Well, the bank doesn't have enough cash or central bank reserves to buy things. Central bank reserves being the money of the financial system. And they have to sell their treasuries to get those central bank reserves, which is all banks want to use as money these days, the treasuries. And will ultimately be forced to use it, the discount window, discount window at the Fed, wherein they will be able to get more bank reserves, but at a higher interest rate. And nowadays, that would be financial suicide, as no bank would want to trade with a bank that has been at the discount window. This is what led to the fall of Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, because they couldn't get enough bank reserves to back their deposits. Right? They couldn't get enough bank reserves, which is basically modern day gold in a way. It, it has the same uh, effect, where the more of that you have, it's you can create more loans off of it, right? Um, which is creating bank deposits, creating money in people's bank accounts, 
loaning it out, right? Creating money out of thin air, right? That's what this that's what that's what how the banking system works. They get these and they're able to make more of these. If they have a lesser proportion of these and a more higher proportion of this, that's bad because that means that their in a sense their bank money has lost value. So their bank deposits being made worth less were made worthless as their customers took the money and ran. Their bad loans were specifically due to the fact that they were making easy money by creating private label mortgage-backed securities, which were seen as pristine collateral, much as U.S. treasuries. They had, for a time, an infinite money glitch where they could make collateral out of thin air that everyone would want to use. This is essentially what the great financial crisis was about and they were, uh, and why there is a giant issue with the monetary system that can only be solved with collapse because you do not, you do not have any faith in the, in the private system, the private colla- <laughs> the private banking system to create collateral that is trustworthy because they'll just go ahead and make BS collateral like uh, private label mortgage backed securities. Um, so, Keep, so to understand, so that's that's why repos are so important. Why the repo market, rather, is so important because this is basically making that collateral for deals like this, which um, for deals like the one I, I I I read like right here, which by the way is from Central Banking One Hundred One uh, by um, Joseph Wang, really great book. I recommend it. Um, the stuff like this is the crux. This is this is the bread and butter of the financial system. This is how everything from your money your money market funds, um, which have now gone from prime MMFs, which deal with private debt like bank debt and you know investing in short term bank debt and um, uh, corporate debt. It's they they've now switched over to um, uh, to government money market funds a lot more because they don't. Basically, back in 2016, there was this rule that said that you basically pr- prime MMFs can freeze um, accounts um, so that bank runs don't happen, right? So that you don't get another 2008 situation where Lehman Brothers fall, uh, collapses over a weekend. So, um, you know that that that's that's an example is, is government money market funds, but in general, the entirety of of the because they deal in I should have brought this up, but. Um. Uh, I recommend this thing that I wrote right here. Actually, uh, more distrust in the debt funding markets. Banks freaking out about bank runs. Um, basically, right here. You can read that. That, that this will explain it pretty well. But a part of those government money market funds, which basically took have dominated over the prime money market funds, which invested in that private debt, they now invest in T bills. You know one month to one year U.S. treasuries, and then one month or less in cash, um, which would be like 4X crap. So um, basically that's the best way to understand it, right? This Banks need this so that they can do the things that keep them alive. Now, um, what happened since... Uh, March of 2021 is they have they have stopped. Banks have essentially been going to the Fed and buying those repos, um, putting their money into those into those into those short, extremely you know overnight, literally overnight. This is this is so. Imagine buying a treasury that expires the next day. That's the maturity. That's where they're putting their money. They're putting 92. So divide 92 or a one sixteen oh four point eight 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 one divided by 92. And that's how many billions of dollars every day uh, banks are putting into reverse repo. Now, what is that? Well, reverse repo, buying the security and agreeing to sell it in the future. Um, so... What they're doing is buying these repos overnight <clears throat> and selling them back to the Fed. So um, now, like I said, th- this is what they need in order to kind of keep the whole collateral machine going. 
well, why didn't that? Why why wasn't this going on before? Really? Um, well, it's because banks have stopped trusting one another to 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 have um, enough collateral. They that basically what this tells us is the price to play has gone gotten so expensive basically because banks are so untrustworthy of another of one another and this happened back in late 2019 when um i don't think i've it pulled up but oh I, actually i do when um the, the 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 federal reserve had to come in and act as the counterparty for both uh the people wanting the repos and the people selling the repos because or the you know the banks rather um because Banks like Deutsche Bank were just not trusted. So they're like, hey, could I get this treasury? Uh, you're going to have to fucking pay me 15%. Sorry. Um, and that's what ended up happening. There was this, uh, what we call repo repo madness. The repo madness of, uh, what was it, September, October, November of, uh, of 2019. So, um, yeah, so that, that's exactly what's going on here is it's the same deal. There's no trust in the banking system. And it's showing specifically you need more and more and more and more and more and more collateral to play the game, to, to, to stay, to have skin in the game. So it not only says that, but it says, uh, you know, n n not just that banks don't really trust one another. Like, hey, I need collateral. I need, I need, I need pristine collateral and a lot of it, buddy, if you want to be doing stuff like, uh, like this right here. Right. So. It not only says crisis of confidence, but it also says um, banks are not risk on, right? It says they'd rather be putting every day, right? Every day lately, um, every day, the Fed uh, or uh, uh, the, the counterparties, hold on. They have been putting tr over a trillion since uh, about August, I think it was like August 7th or so, August 11th, I think. So that's over a trillion dollars yeah. that, that could be put into small business loans or mortgages or, you know, what have you, mortgage issuance. Um, but it's not. It's not going into the real economy. It's not going into, you know, risk on, into stocks. It's not going into investment. It's going into safe haven, uh, basically pussying out. Let's put our money in something that we know we can get a risk-free return the next day and just keep rolling it over. So that if you if you take into account that M2 is only like what? 7.5 trillion dollars. That's all of the money uh That's that's all of the money in the system, right? I don't know my M's extremely well, but that that, that, that this includes central bank reserves. If I'm not wrong, if not, then you know you can correct me. But that that's how much money the system is putting, like a, a giant chunk in every day into risk off. I need my collateral. Um, you know. Uh, uh f freaking out basically so when you see uh, basically like today where it reached another all-time high it reached like four all-time highs last week and now it's uh <laughs> it it literally was like yesterday was an all-time high 1.4 trillion everyone freaked out and then today it's 1.6 trillion so um yeah and and I you know I have this up right here right you know this is this is risk off this is this is a lot of uh, dollar demand more and more dollar demand over the decades. Um, I feel re uh, really stupid that I didn't that I didn't know my M two. I need to I, <laughs> I need to read up. But I you understand what I'm getting at. Um, so uh, let, let's 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 look it up. I'll I'll um humble myself here. M2 money. M2 definition, which 
the uh, Fed wants to change. Calculation of money that's uh, money supply that includes all elements of M- M- M1 as well as near money. M1 includes cash and checking deposits, while near money refers to savings accounts, money markets, securities, mutual funds, and other time deposits. So, yeah, the money of the, all the money in the system, essentially. Um, so, uh, and this is the number that everyone freaks out about. They're like, oh, this is inflation. It's not, but that's, um, I've talked about the, that before. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so when banks have all these central bank reserves that they're given in quantitative easing, which quantitative easing is literally just the Fed coming in and, and giving central bank reserves for treasuries, um, you know, making a swap, ma- making a swap uh, of those two things, they just put those central bank reserves back into the system because they're like, I don't, I'm, I don't trust the real economy. I don't want to invest. I just want to put it in this. Dumb money can, can buy stocks. Dumb money can get useless 401ks and Roth IRAs and what have you, freaking pensions. Um, but we're, we're not going to invest in that. We're going to invest in something that isn't going to uh, screw us over. Anyway, hopefully I explained this decently enough. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll probably answer them. Um, more risk off here. You know, buying treasuries, literally going down for decades. Yeah. Um, this is bank demand of treasuries. This is risk off. This is the economy is slowing down, right? Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless.